Ross Bowman Podcast. You better ask. Welcome back to the Ross Bolin Podcast, otherwise known as RBP, presented by Bolin Media. I am your host, Ross Bolin, back again as always with your co-host, Chris Coles. Colson. Morning. Howdy. Happy Howdy Monday. Today. Starting positive today, Chris. Absolutely. But Gotta I, start positive. I do have to roast some chestnuts during sure. the closing segment, just as a heads up. But big things popping since we last spoke. Huge things. Huge, massive. The election from hell has all but ended. Absolutely. And, and, as of this morning, we have a vaccine coming eventually. Wow. 90% effective, apparently. Wow. And in the next several months, uh, access to it should be worldwide. Look, I don't know diddly squat about science. I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be a fucking doctor. But this seems really promising based on every article I've read so far. And the BBC and CNN and Fox and MSNBC and every damn channel this morning. So I'm confident we're finally seeing some momentum here, which is huge. People sound positive, at least. I mean, steps in the right direction, right? The stock market is a fucking mess. Oh. No idea what that means. Like, good mess? Bad mess? Up and down mess? Windy mess? Everything that benefited from coronavirus is getting shit on. Oh. And everything that crashed, Uh oil, airlines, Uh cruises, as a result. Coming back strong? Through the roof. So we're flip-flopping now. Because... And this is what how my Some dad my dad typically explains it to me. The pendulum has swung. Perhaps. The market is always six months ahead. Okay. Right? So that's what it's reacting to. Like whatever these economic uh genius people and computers Predicting. can figure out. Sure. It's usually like six months ahead. Would, which is always just an insane concept to me because I can think like, you know, roughly forty five minutes into the future. I would assume algorithms play a role there somewhere. There's probably an Somebody's algorithm. Somebody's using an algorithm or two. Somebody did math. Yep. At one point. And but this is huge. Yeah. Vaccine coming. Huge. Huge windfall. We're really doing it. Also, we have a like a super speed transport system being developed by Virgin. Virgins. It involves pods. There are pods. Are vir- Oh, Virgin. Richard Branson's Virgin Hyperloop has completed the world's first passenger ride on a high-speed levitating pod system. So it's not a Virgin anymore. It's just a normal Hyperloop now because it's gotten its first time out of the way. So I bought a Tesla Model 3, and within a week, Richard Branson fires off a levitating pod that goes 107 miles per hour. Actually, wait. I think it goes even faster than that. It can go faster than that. The entire thing's wild, though. You've seen footage on the news on all the channels this morning as well. Um, and basically they tested this thing for the first time, got up to 107 miles an hour at the company's dev loop test site in Las Vegas, Nevada. This was their first time they've put passengers in it. Well, that seems promising. Yeah. So it was the, it was obviously a big deal. Yeah. I mean, a train with no people in it doesn't really do too much good for the people. I would assume. Apparently the Los Angeles based Hyperloop, according to, uh, Apple news, Mm -hmm. envisions a future where floating pods packed with passengers and cargo hurtle through vacuum tubes at 600 miles per hour or faster. This is on some, like, real Jetsons shit. I mean, imagine how sick that would be if you could just hop in a pod and go... It says... I'm looking on the Wikipedia page for Hyperloops right now. It says uh, it would drastically reduce travel times versus trains as well as planes over distances of approximately a 1,000 miles, basically. So I could get from Austin to Charlotte and a little floating pod thing going 930 miles an hour. I just don't know if I want to be fired through, like, time and space like a fucking bank. You know when you go to the bank and you're in the drive-thru and they- Sure, they have the sucky tube thing. That thing? Yep. Like, I've seen what happens in Tommy Boy if you sit too close to one of those and you get your shirt ripped right off. Sure. Your nipples are exposed to the world. just seems dangerous to me. I I love Richard Branson, by the way. I don't think- The the pre-Elon Musk- we had Richard Branson. So he's now been he's building gonna... rocket ships and shit for decades. Well, right now, the Hyperloop Wikipedia page is giving Tesla and SpaceX a lot of love, and I'm not seeing any Richard Branson love on here. Dick Branson. Maybe that's why. Nobody I... calls him that. No? Nobody. Maybe his close friends? Except his mother. His I'm... late mother. Imagine if only your mother called you Dick. She may be alive. I don't know. Really don't know much about Richard Branson. Just like the look of him and think he's a, a crazy innovator person, and we need those people. I think we need the Hyperloop. 
I'm ready to hop in and get shot through time and space, brother. Y'all get shot through in your pod at 600 MPH. I'll be in my self-driving robot car doing my thing. RBP 347 is brought to you by Felix Gray. Chris and I constantly have our faces in a screen from morning to night, every single morning, afternoon, and night. There is no cutting back. Now more than ever, all of us are relying on screens to get our jobs done. We're Zooming all of our fucking meetings. We're doing FaceTimes constantly to stay in touch with friends and family. We're staring at screens all day, every day. It's what it is in 2020. That's where we're at. And there are a lot of blue light glasses on the market to protect your eyes, but they're not all created equal. Many blue light glasses do not offer a filter that is actually getting enough blue light out, especially in the range that matters. That is not the case with Felix Gray, who uses a proprietary technology to filter 15 times more blue light in the same range. Huge. Huge improvement. Too much screen time results in tired, dry eyes, headaches, blurry vision, and trouble sleeping. I've experienced all these symptoms over the course of my, like, what? Trying to think, trying to do math. Almost 20 years as a contact lens and glasses wearer and now living in the allergy capital of the world, nobody is more familiar with the symptoms of these eye issues than I am, especially with the amount of screens that I stare at and the Felix Grays give me all of the relief that I need. They filter out 90% of blue light in the most damaging range and eliminate 99% of glare through their proprietary industry-leading lens technology only available in Felix Gray. Nine in 10 Felix Gray customers report significant symptom relief. They are hand-finished from durable, super lightweight Italian acetate. They're beautiful glasses, phenomenal. Cole's mom just got a pair, super happy with them. Sent us a picture over the weekend. They've got over 200,000 happy customers, Felix Gray, and they're not just the right choice, they're the only choice. They give you all the relief you need when you slide these babies on. They've got them in prescription, non-prescription, readers. Felix Gray has you covered with optical glasses for work, sleep glasses in the evening that are clinically proven to increase melatonin secretion when worn leading up to bedtime. You can try them for 30 days risk-free right now when you go to felixgrayglasses.com slash RBP for the absolute best quality blue light filtering glasses on the market. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses, felixgrayglasses.com slash RBP. Do what I did. Start taking better care of your eyes. Cole's mom is on it, too. Yep. Feel better, work smarter. Shipping and returns totally free at felixgrayglasses.com slash RBP. Time for some announcements and some shouts. If you want to watch our show, not just listen, you can do so on youtube.com slash Media. Every episode right there. We wave at the camera. Hello. Look at, look at the camera. Hello. Look at the, look, we wave at the camera. Twitch.tv slash Boss Roland, another place where you can watch Chris and I live, actually. Three nights a week-ish, thereabouts. Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Central, we'll be, we will be back this week. Twitch.tv slash Boss Roland. Come through, subscribe, follow. Things have been getting wild. Review. We've been playing Warzone. We got a new game called Rogue Company we've been mixing in. We played the new season of Apex Legends last night. We've been working in Fall Guys still. I've grown bored of Among Us, but that's just me. And uh, Twitch is a blast, so come through. Twitch.tv slash Boss Roland. Now it is time for our first segment. Paying respects to Alex Trebek. So amidst the madness of this past weekend, we lost entertainment legend Alex Trebek. The incredibly famous and popular Jeopardy host was battling pancreatic cancer and passed away at 80 years old. And this man was a god, um, among the goats of television, to be sure. The way he inserted wit and humor into his hosting, the way he wasn't afraid to dumb shame even his own contestants. He was just a flawless game show host. He was awesome. And, uh, and some more, a little background on Trebek. He was born in Ontario, Canada in 1940 to George and uh, Lucille were his parents. He earned his philosophy degree from the University of Ottawa in 1961. Philosophy degree. After graduation, he became a TV and radio reporter for the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation before moving to the United States in 1973 after landing his first American television gig, hosting NBC's game show, Wizard of Odds. Trebek went on to become the host of High Rollers on NBC and the $128,000 question, which shot in Toronto. Didn't realize he had so much experience with game shows before he made his way to Jeopardy, but he did. Uh, makes him one of only two individuals to MC shows in both the U.S. and Canada. He crushed more than 8,000 episodes of Jeopardy. We're on episode 347, and I feel like I've been doing this for several lifetimes. 8,000 episodes of Jeopardy over 37 seasons of work. He won six Daytime Emmys, a Lifetime Achievement Award back in 2011. By the way, I always, I always think about this shit. Whenever they give somebody a Lifetime Achievement Award, if I win a Lifetime Achievement Award, which would be an honor, thank you, uh, while I'm still working, though, yep. I'm going to be pissed. I always feel like that's a nudge, like, hey, man. It's time to wrap it up. You are old as hell, and it is time to retire. Yeah, it is the wrap it up music at the Academy Awards that they play when you're giving your speech. Like, you're done here. You're done. And it's we like give them like Denzel Washington and Tom Hanks 
and Alex Trebek in 2011. That was nine years ago. Yeah, but I think it's for like situations like this. Like imagine if he died and you had to give it to him posthumously. He didn't even have cancer yet at that point. Okay, true. But I mean, you could get hit by a bus. It's I mean, weird. I don't know. There's I... lots of buses in Hollywood. You'd be walking across the soundstage or something like that. Golf cart comes across, done. Yeah, but you're That's Alex it. Trebek. I'm just saying, if I'm Alex Trebek, I assume already sure. I'm getting the Lifetime Achievement Award at some point. Well, he's probably like a, a bunch guy, of them okay. from a different bunch of different organizations. So I'm not all that concerned with with achieving it while I'm still breathing. Like that shit's for y'all to remember how dope I am. If I'm Alex Trebek. Okay, true. You true. know, maybe they should change the title to like Lifetime Still Achieving Award. Yeah. Or like the like, Lifetime Continuously Achieves Every Year Award. Super badass who achieved a lot but could still achieve more before they die award. Yeah, like we really enjoy your content but we don't want to nudge you for what you've done and continue to do award. Sure, sure. Anyway, respect to the GOATs, Alex Trebek and Sean Connery probably reenacting that SNL sketch in heaven together right now. Le tits now. RBP347 is also brought to you by Echelon. Everyone knows I am back on the Ross Fit grind, coming out of this shitstorm of a year harder, better, faster, stronger, like 2007 Kanye West. When it comes to getting or staying in shape, nothing feels as good as that feeling of accomplishment, of hitting your fitness goals and feeling great about yourself, and Echelon can get you there. Echelon offers the next generation of connected fitness bikes, fitness mirrors, rowing machines, and their all-new Stride Smart Treadmill. No matter what your favorite fitness activity, they got you covered. Echelon gives you a fun and challenging workout from the comfort of your home. Their world-class instructors will motivate you with thousands of daily live and on-demand studio-level classes always available when you need them. Unlike their competitors, Echelon is affordable for everyone, and one membership lets up to five family members all work out at the same time. Right now, you can try Echelon Fitness Equipment at home for 30 days by going to echelonfit.com slash Ross. That's E-C-H-E-L-O-N fit. EchelonFit.com slash Ross to try any Echelon fitness equipment at home for 30 days. Next segment. Grab your light. This is Stop the Wikipedia when you high. Stop the Wikipedia when you're high. God, that's calming. The part at the end is just the best. <laughs> It is the best. This week's stuff to Wikipedia when you're high is Jan Balsrud. Balsrud. B-A-A-L-S-R-U-D if you'd like to Google to make sure I'm not just making this up. Because you never know. I mean, you should, but you never know. Could have been a badass vet you haven't heard of if Jan was an American. Was not an American. He was not. Mm. And those are the rules. I don't make the rules. I just follow them. Jan was a commando sure. in the Norwegian resistance trained by the British during World War II. Crazy story. Listen up. During the German invasion in Norway in 1940, he fought in Vestfold, later escaping to Sweden, which was neutral. Okay. But regardless, he was convicted of espionage and expelled from the country somehow, which is hard to do in Sweden. Kicked out of Sweden, all right. In 1941, Jan reached Great Britain wow. after having traveled through the Soviet Union, okay. Africa, wow. and the U.S. Uh, so he, l big loop. Just fighting around the world. He He's joined the Norwegian company Linge, don't know what that means, in early 1943. Uh, he, three other commandos, and a boat crew of eight, all Norwegians, embarked on a mission to destroy a German airfield control tower at Bardufos and Looks recruit right. for the Norwegian resistance movement. This mission, Operation Martin. I wonder if that was just like a guy in the in the squad and he was like, yo, guys, it's my turn, please. Or if it's like... Martin Kirk came up with the mission and was like, guess what, fam? It's called Operation Martin. And they were like, Re really, Martin? Really? You're going to name you it? You named it after so yourself like, and he was like, yeah. yeah, I get to decide it's the It's going down in history. And I'm Martin. Or maybe it's like hurricane names, like they swap off, but depending on like the time of year and shit sure. like that. Yeah. It was Martin's time. But this was Operation Martin, and it was compromised when Jan and his fellow soldiers, seeking a trusted resistance contact, accidentally made contact with an unaligned civilian shopkeeper. Sure. He had the same name as their contact, and, fearing for his life, and suspecting it was a test by the Germans, reported them to the local police office, who reported them to the Germans. They're just going around asking for, like, Ron. Uh, are you Ron? Ron? No, they were Ron? Hey, I'm Ron, looking, yeah. They were out there looking for Martin, and it turned out there was just a ton of German dudes named Martin, and that presented some problems. It all fell back on the Martin who came up you're with like, the you're name. You're Martin? Okay, Martin, sick. We're going to tell you everything we have to know about the Norwegian resistance. And, he, and then he thought it was a Nazi test and ran straight to the Nazis. <laughs> that's, not, that's not what you want. It kind of reminds me of uh, Lone Survivor when they run across the goat herder. And they're like, like half the dudes are like, we got to off this guy right now. 
and Marcus Luttrell was like, nah, this is just some goat herder. He'll be fine. It's cool. And then the goat herder ran straight to the Taliban and was like, they're in the mountains. Didn't go very well. I'm just well. saying. I'm not saying anything, but I'm just saying. Okay. Uh, what else? I wonder if his name was Martin, too. So he gets re- they get reported to the Germans the morning after their blunder on March 29th, their fishing boat, brought home contained around 100 kilos of explosives ex- intended to destroy the air control tower, and it was attacked by a German vessel. The Norwegians scuttled their boat by detonating the 100 kilos of explosive using a day, uh, time delay fuse. So they were just like, fuck it, lit all the explosives and bailed and fled in a small boat, uh, but their boat was promptly sunk by the Germans. Mm. Jan and others swam ashore. So 100 kilos just went down, went down heavy. <laughs> Jan and others swam ashore in ice-cold Arctic waters. Jan is just... This is the opposite of the dream he's living. He was the only commando to evade capture, and soaking wet and missing one sea boot, he escaped into a snow gully where he shot and killed a German Gestapo officer with his pistol. Bro, this officer's just out taking, like, a cigarette break, and a guy with one boot on, soaking wet out of the Arctic Sea, looking like a frigid Neptunian man, just shoots him in the back of the head. Allegedly. He evaded capture for approximately two months, suffering from frostbite and snow blindness. Snow blindness is where you're in the snow, and there's so much snow that you can't fucking see. So he can't really tell which direction he's going. His deteriorating physical condition forced him to rely on the assistance of Norwegian patriots. I'm not sure why he just wouldn't have done that anyway. I'm not sure he was forced. I mean, he was Norwegian. Wouldn't relying on the uh, help of Norwegian patriots be the move? But it was during this time that he hid in a wooden hut at Revdal, which he called Hotel Savoy. Don't know why. Jan operated on his feet with a pocket knife, as he suspected he had gangrene in two toes resulting from the frostbite. Fearing it would spread, he cut off his big toe and the infected bit of the index toe. Mm, Sure, sure. Not long after that, Jan was left on a high plateau on a stretcher in the snow, where he was supposed to be collected by Norwegian resistance. Due to weather and German patrols in the town of Mandolin, he was there for 27 days and was close to death for lack of food. I'm sorry, so they were like, Jan, we'll be right back. Stay here on this high plateau atop this fucking stretcher. Everything will be fine. And then 27 days passed. Yeah. Well, they figured he had his toes to snack on during the time, so I guess they figured they had, you know, One a little bit of One big toe and a fucking piece of an index is going to last you, what, six hours? Uh, I think you can get 15 days out of each of those. 27 days. 27 days. During this time, while he lay beneath, uh, or I'm sorry, behind a snow wall built around a rock to shelter him, Jan amputated nine of his toes to stop the See? spread of gangrene. At this point, he's cut off most of his feet. Or plenty, his toes, plenty of snacks. But saved the rest of his feet by doing so. Huge. Huge. Jan then spent seven months in a Swedish hospital in Bowdoin before he was flown back to Britain in an RAF de Havilland Mosquito aircraft. He soon went to Scotland to help train other Norwegian patriots who were going to enter Norway to continue the fight against the Germans. After a long struggle to learn to walk without his toes, Jan eventually was sent to Norway as an agent at his request. Again, they should have given him the Lifetime Achievement Award at that point and just been like, Jan, it's time to retire. Maybe wrap it up. But they uh, they didn't. Um, So he was still in active service at the time of the war's end in 1945. That ended German occupation, and Balsrud traveled to Oslo to reunite with his family, whom he had left five years before to go fight and cut off all of his toes. He was appointed honorary member of the Order of the British Empire by the British. He was awarded the St. Olav's Medal with Oak Branch by Norway. He was a second lieutenant. An annual, an annual Remembrance March in Jan's honor takes place on July 25th in Troms, where the participants follow his escape route for nine days. There's also a movie as well, apparently, that came out in just 2017 called The Twelfth Man, which was just terrible branding, and Seahawks and Texas A&M Aggies were the only people uh, who saw it in theaters. Seahawks fans and Aggie fans. I wonder they what both they call their me. fan bases The Twelfth Man. When they went and saw... That's the joke. Jan... And Jan. him cutting his toes off. Jonathan Reese Myers was in the movie The Twelfth Man, and he wasn't even playing Jan. I'm sorry, I don't know who Jonathan Reese Myers is. He's an actor. Okay. I wonder what toe he kept. I like to think it's like one of the middle toes on like his left foot, so he's just constantly like flicking off the world with his toes. And did he do like the Davos Seawar thing where you keep the toes in Davos' case they were fingers and you put them in a little bag and you wear them around your neck the rest of your life to remind you like at one point, you had toes? I had to cut these toes off. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I thought, you know, maybe he would forget he ever had toes. I mean, frankly, if you ever get into an argument with somebody, it's like, listen, you open the bag around your neck. Listen, you see these? These are my fucking toes. Yeah, I, I cut, cut these, these off. off. And then they just go, oh, you're right. Oh. You're right. I'm going to leave you be now. Yeah. 
I wonder if he kept the knife too. He's like, this is what if it was like a butter knife? He had to bite them off. Oh. No. 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 And that's this week's well, stuff to Wikipedia. It. When you're high. His pocket knife. You know, a little Nah. RBP347 is also brought to you by Quip, makers of the greatest toothbrush and oral care products in all the land and longtime supporter of this podcast. You know Quip, the electric toothbrush you hear about all the time, but it's their sleek, reusable floss pick you'll want to use next. Many of you don't floss because it's a pain in the ass, and Quip has fixed that. The durable handle is easy to guide, restrings with a click, and comes with a compact mirrored dispensing case for on-the-go flossing, plus a single refill pod replaces over 180 single-use plastic flossers, so it's better for your teeth and the environment, which I have to note, as a guy who was burning through literally 365 plastic little floss picks a year, this is huge for me. Uh, and if you're not a pick person, by the way, Quip also has refillable floss string that expands to clean... It's easy, it's simple, it's cleaner, it's better for the environment, it's better for you, everybody wins. Pair your floss with the perfect electric toothbrush for adults and kids. Quip has the simple guiding features you need, like the timed sonic vibrations with golden uh, guiding pulses to help you brush better. You can personalize your routine with over nine premium brush colors, plus anti-cavity toothpaste for every taste in mint and watermelon. Quip also offers brush head floss and toothpaste refills every three months from just $5. Shipping is free. So you can save money and skip the store, bring delight to your everyday brushing, and join the over 5 million miles brushing with Quip starting at $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash RBP right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash RBP, spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash RBP. Quip, better oral health made simple. Next segment, Monday Mental Health Minute. For this week's Monday Mental Health Minute, I wanted to talk about a weird sensation that I've experienced throughout my battle with anxiety and panic disorder. Coles, I'm not sure if you've ever experienced this, but let me summarize it by uh, first saying I've shared my experience having uh, my first panic attack on my 21st birthday several times. And because it was strange, because it was a day that should have been a massive relief for me, like a huge weight off my shoulders turning 21. Sure. Being able to drink legally for the first time after years and years of legal issues and, and, it was, and, and finally getting off probation off, uh, after three and a half years. It was this, like, fresh life. And that was the day I experienced my first panic attack, which is odd. So Sunday morning, a couple days ago, yesterday morning, no longer having to worry about the damn election, my brain once again found that place where my, my anxiety was basically driven by a lack of worry. Like the election vacating my mind left a space for worry that my brain was desperately trying to fill in. And this is going to become a thing for a lot of people this week, I'm sure. And I found a way to combat it. It's just to be even more proactive about how, to, how you're handling your business day-to-day, -day, getting your sleep, keeping yourself busy and productive, perhaps most importantly. Um, the big, big takeaway from this is that when you notice patterns in your mental health, mm -hmm. if you notice certain things tend to lead you toward panic attacks or a place where you're generally anxious or where you're suffering from depression or you can't focus or whatever. It could be something as simple as the lack of focus, like I'm saying. But anything that's like a like a leading indicator for things that you can see usually lead you to a place of instability, you got to be proactive about. So like this week, I kind of felt this coming where we've all had this massive tension sure. and stress uh, throughout the course of 2020 that really peaked over the past couple months, Absolutely. undoubtedly. Absolutely. And we have finally gotten ourselves to a place post-election results, for most of us anyway, living in reality, that... Uh, we feel relief. But that was occupying such a large place for most of us. Sure. Some of us, it was all consuming. Many Americans were, were completely taken to, to a different place than they've ever been in terms of obsessing over politics and the 24-hour news cycle and social media completely and the agree. tweeting and the twatting and the sizzling, all of it. it. It got out of control. And as a result, it's a weird adjustment for all of us back to normalcy. And as we get more news on this vaccine and the COVID situation and moving into, like, obviously beginning of 2021, you shouldn't just plan on everything being normal again. It's going to take months and months and months and months to get there. But inevitably, we will get there. And the thing is, yo, that's going to be weird. We've been living in this stranger version of life where everything is, uh, it's, it's just very different. It's almost simplified from from our society prior to covid simplified yet also exaggerated because of our isolation and our like 
things can kind of get out of hand when it's just on social media and everything gets exaggerated and kind of blown up and out of proportion a little bit because I don't think we have like normal societal interactions to ground us almost. Do you get what I'm kind of saying? Like it's easier for us like to go down these rabbit holes with all these like-minded thoughts and ideas on social media when like if things were normal and we were interacting with society on a day-to-day basis, you have more of an ability to hear different opinions on all sides and kind of ground ourselves because we're, you know, seeing that life is still normal. But because everything isn't normal right now, it's easy to like, like, because we're spending so much time online right now, we're getting so much more of the exaggerated heightened sense of anxiety everywhere. Sure, sure. And so once that goes away and goes back to normal, I think a lot of I think a lot of this will kind of fade away. Well, just like the constant existential terror that we've been feeling the last couple months as things begin to go back to normal, hopefully. Yeah, I don't think that'll ever go away from me completely. But it is something that's going to be a big shift like this, not having to worry, like just not even having to give a crap about what, you know, um, 70 million people have to say. Finally is nice. That's relieving. To not have to worry about what the president is going to be tweeting off the fucking top of his brain at any given moment or have to tune in to the fucking news for six hours a day to have the slightest idea what's going on in terms of like the international pandemic or the election or just just to even have a dude, the president-elect, uh, Mr. Biden, stand up and speak with some degree of like regularity was in, it was bizarre. I mean, it's just a bizarre feeling that w- I woke up Sunday morning and I felt like I was in a different world. And I know that was the case for a lot of people. But then for me, it really did result in this strange feeling of anxiety. Like, well, now what almost? Right. So you always have to be proactive when you see situations like this coming. And I'll even give you an example. that's just every year. The holiday season. People who struggle with mental health, people who struggle with, I mean, just humans in general. You don't even have to have mental health issues. The holidays are fucking hard, man. Being around your family, back to speaking of normalcy, everybody having different opinions, uh, it just being incredibly stressful. Undoubtedly, this holiday season will be as stressful, if not more stressful, than any of the ones that have preceded it in my lifetime based on the election results, based on the pandemic situation. And that shit is hard. So when you see the holiday season coming, put yourself in a good spot. Be proactive. Number one rule of mental health at this point. Like fighting to get back after you have fallen down is much more difficult than just staying on the offensive, always trying to avoid the falls. They will come inevitably. Like you will fall and have to get up. But if you're proactive and putting yourself in a good position so that you're not suffering unnecessarily or that you've just got more, it's like it's waking up knowing you've got the emotional capacity to handle whatever the day brings and having that confidence that like, whatever the fuck happens today, I've got this. That's something that a lot of us had to forfeit over the past several months. Uh, or that, we were, that we've waved bye-bye to over the course of 2020. And we got to get back to that place. And I think right now also is a perfect time to come back to really focusing on you as well. Yeah, we've all been so focused on what's happening in the outside world. What's happening in uh, American society. What's which, happening in the, in the political realm. Which has been needed. And now sure. that we've gotten through what at least has part been, of it. yeah, at least part of it, we've gotten through a vast majority of a large stressor for a lot of us. It's a great time to refocus on ourselves and really put a lot of effort into making sure that we're taking care of ourselves again and really focusing on like, we don't have to be on social media all the time anymore because we don't have to keep up with updates of the election, stuff like that instantly. Take some time to be by yourself. Take some time to disconnect. Unplug, unwind. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Get out, like get out in fucking nature. Especially Do this weekend. Different. Like yeah. this week, this year, we we lost so much of our ability to just go do things to take our mind off of like the stressors of everyday life. Hundred percent. We don't have that like we used to because of the pandemic. At least not from a safety standpoint. And that's hard. It's a weird situation. You really got to do, like, you got to go out of your way right now to sort of change up your headspace based on everything that we've got going on. And that's just a thing that I have found, you know, the longer I've lived with, with panic disorder with 12 years now, the, the more experience I've gained, the easier it is for me and the more, you know, in touch with myself I get, the, the easier it is for me to notice opportunity for anxiety and to notice where I need to be proactive in advance of something that I know puts me in a spot to maybe experience more anxiety than I would like. 
So that's something that uh, on yesterday morning I had to sort of address with myself again. And it's something that uh, I, I will plan on doing at some point during the holiday season as well. And it's just like if there was a time to start, why not November 9th, 2020? It's Monday. Switch it up today. Take yourself to a healthy place and uh, build a better tomorrow for you. You know, for you. Next segment, premium slap and tickle. So every Friday, Chris and I drop an ad-free exclusive episode on Patreon.com slash Ross Boland Podcast. There are no ads on Patreon. What'd you say? I said, yes, we do. Straight content in exchange for your financial support of the podcast on Patreon. If you need a taste, though, before you buy the whole brick, here's 10 minutes from last week's ad-free Patreon exclusive episode for you to enjoy. Little sample guy. Ross. This is Greg from Jupiter, Florida. Greg! I'm calling because something struck my mind the other day that has a lot to do with you, my friend. Oh, does it, Greg? I'm sure that you are aware of the White Claw craze. You ever heard of White Claw? And remember, it's 2019, people. I know for a fact that you are sober, my friend. True. So, well, as a question to you, dry, Ross, dry. do you have FOMO about never crushing an ice-cold White Claw? Now, I prefer my claws on the beach or Great on spot. game day. Mm. Big Florida Gator guys. Go Gators. The claw. And I couldn't help but not understand how you See haven't Lilar. had the urge to try one. Now, has this crossed your mind? Do you think about it on the reg? Just <laughs> let me know. Oh, and by the way, it's my birthday. Happy birthday last 10, year. 10 gang gang. Peace. All right, good question, Claw Guy. Uh, hey, to be fair, we're only a month off from that birthday shout for this year. So now I remember, I remember when White Claw blew up originally, and I remember, and, and and like, it was the first alcohol fad that I hadn't been a part of, right? Like for Loco, I was still drinking. Uh, Fireball, I was still drinking. Wait, so did you have the OG for Loco? Yeah. That had the caffeine in it? Yeah, yeah. They were, they, like, literally people were dying. How was that? It was it was legit, like, poison, bro. It was like a drug. Like, you could drink three of those and wake up the next day and feel like you took a fistful of Xanax. Like, it was <laughs> fucked up. I still can't believe how long they were legal. Like, there like, was a point where we were like, well, these are getting taken away for, eventually for sure. And then it was like months before they were all the way out and the new ones replaced them. Well, whatever. the originals were like $4 a can too, right? It was, like, it was, it was ridiculously insane. cheap. And they're huge. Yeah. And you could just pump them down your face and black out. Yeah. Uh, but this was like the first one I remember White Claws exploding onto the scene. The first one where I was like, I was not a participant, right? I have never felt less FOMO than all of you jackasses pounding fucking spritzers or whatever these are called, wine coolers or whatever these are called, White Claws, but every goddamn alcohol company on the planet had to pump out their own seltzer. And no, the, it, frankly, it was I, I was glad to be out of the game at that point. There's just not exciting shit happening in the booze world like there is with pot. Yeah, we used to have, I mean, we used, that's a perfect example. We used to have fun things like the Four loco that, you know, there's a little risk involved. There was. Now it's, it's just seltzer. Of, the risk of death. Literally the healthiest possible alcoholic drink that you could possibly drink. Hard drugs are where the progress is being made. Exactly. Alcohol is, is so, like, 18th century cool, man. Like, no, that's not what I meant. Ni- 20th century cool. Like, it was just so old school at this point. We've done everything we can do with it. Y'all are sipping on seltzers at this. It's just sad. And meanwhile, in the cannabis industry, they're figuring out ways to turn it into, like, lip balm and sunscreen and lubricant for sex and Dog wax. Things. And there's, like, 400 different tools you can smoke pot out, out of now. There's, like, 56 different subcultures beneath stoner at this point. It's just more interesting. So I didn't feel any FOMO because I was high as fuck. Also, I was looking around like, why the fuck is everybody pounding seltzer? What is happening? So confused. But y'all seem to be enjoying yourselves, so there was no hate on my end. It was just confusing. I was just like, <laughs> where did the seltzers come from? I thought y'all were trying to get fucked up. Now everybody's on a drinking seltzer. It turns out some of them are harder than others. But to be fair... Hard seltzer, it's I what think it's called, right? That's why they, uh... I mean, that's why the White Claw fad went so hard, because you drink, you know, four White Claws, 
They're like 6%. percent they yeah, do good. It's like an IPA. We're just a weirdly hypocritical society of drunks. Because like we make fun of everybody who pounds Mike's Hard Lemonade for 20 years. And then out of, sudden, out of nowhere, people are like, seltzer! And everybody's on board? I just I could not wrap my, my head around that part. I was like, we rip people constantly for their lame alcohol decisions. And then the whole world was just like, yeah, I'll put a Vizzy or 7 down. I don't get that reference. I'm sorry. It's one of the hard seltzers. Oh, interesting. Vizzy. Well, uh, Charlotte now has the, uh, I believe, the country's first seltzer bar. I don't know if it's fully open yet, but it is a uh, craft seltzery. If you'd like to go check it out, you can go up and get flavored seltzers on tap. It's a hoot. I just uh, Googled how many hard seltzers are there now. And there's at least 30 that I can tell you because I see a list of the 30 best. But it's not really a thing like when you quit something permanently when you when you're quitting it to cut it out of your life there's no real um consideration given back to that that substance so like when i see somebody dipping now i'm not like oh man i want to dip like it's been like that decision has already been made and the, and and for me i know that's not the case with all addicts with all with all substances but for me with the two that i've quit it was because they were killing me not necessarily physically but mentally and just me, my being, and they were controlling me. And so when I quit them, it wasn't like I don't I don't give consideration to those th- substances anymore. So now, nah, to answer your question, it wasn't something I had FOMO about. Um, but again, always stoked for you all to find new ways to get drunk. That's great. Because anytime somebody presents me with a new way to get high, I try it once and then I freak out or set my thumb on fire and I go never again. And then I just move back to smoking regular flour out of the bong because that's my thing. Some of y'all, your thing is eight hard seltzers to the brain. Both things are effective. There you have it. That's a little slap and tickle teaser from patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Ross Boland podcast where you can support the show in exchange for ad-free episodes every Friday. Come through and thank you to everybody who's there already, which brings us to our next and final segment today. If I hurt your feelings this year, I have received at this point hundreds of messages through all manner of platforms from listeners saying, hey, you know, I've loved the show for years, but I just couldn't handle how political things became. And those people, frankly, I understand the frustration. I remember being younger and annoyed when all my favorite media personalities were seemingly liberal and would bring politics into situations where it didn't seem necessary during election season. But this wasn't that. This was a genuine turning point in our nation's history that I couldn't live with myself if I didn't address honestly and void of secondary selfish motivations. And I know not everyone agrees, and some people actually see it the other way around, but for me, this year I had to stand up for what I believe to be right. I spent too long on the sidelines, maybe it's that I'm finally an adult, but now because of the way this show was built originally, um, the company underneath I'm sorry, the company underneath which this show was spawned, you know, was built on a conservative white demographic. And as such, the hate I received this year has been palpable and it wasn't entirely unexpected. In my now decade of doing content as a career, I have learned that hate is usually an indicator that I'm doing something right, striking a chord, causing a reaction. And the entire world was politicized over the last several months. So pretend, to pretend that somehow this show, this podcast about life, wouldn't involve difficult conversations, that was probably naive. And if after railing against people, politicians, and inaugurations that pick money, o- and organizations that pick money over morals for months, if I had simply ignored the election and what I believe to be a genuine fight for America's soul, that would have made me a hypocrite on a level I'm not even close to being comfortable with. So, I don't go into this week, or into this show every week, thinking, what takes can I create that will be pleasing and soothing to all? Like, sometimes I just have to spit facts, and yeah the numbers suffer as a result. Like, we waved bye-bye to literally thousands and thousands of listeners over the course of 2020 who were upset by my opinions on social and political issues, and that makes me sad. Hopefully, we'll bring some back. But again, that's a result 
of where this show was originally built and the original demographic that came with it. And it wasn't something that was unexpected, but it is something that's important for everybody who still listens to understand. Right? And I think... Go ahead, Chris. I think the goal, correct me if I'm wrong here, from Ross and I, is to constantly bring you guys a raw and genuine side of ourselves to be able to allow you guys to learn from experiences that we have experienced, but also fully understand where we're coming from on all sides of our takes. And so when things like this that go on that affect the world as a whole, the way that this show was built and the way that we live our lives, it's going to come out because a lot of it has to do with our lives. We can't not talk about uh, if the show is about mental health and wellness and, 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 and finding happiness in life, then we can't not talk about something that affects that one way or the other, positively or negatively. Absolutely. And uh, obviously, you know, this year has not been easy for, for that reason. But it's also not like I just have I feel like there's a lot of people waiting for me to shut up. And that's never going to happen. I mean, but like ever. So, like, if there's something that I think I need to speak on, I'm going to speak on it, regardless of if that upsets some people. So, like, you're either here open-minded and and ready to, like, have a conversation, or you're not. And that's not something that I'm going to sit here and try to pretend I can fix. So, I wanted to end today's show by saying thank you. Like, thank you for listening, for sharing this show with your people, for supporting our sponsors, for supporting us on Patreon, and making all this possible throughout 2020 under the most difficult possible circumstances. Thank you. Because Chris and I only have this job as a result of you listening. Uh, without your support, without y'all here every week, without you sharing the show to grow it and to, in some cases, offset losses that were brought upon by uh, social circumstances and just the way this company came to be, um, I, it just means a lot. It means a lot. And to hear from so many people who say, like, you know, I, I thank y'all, for, even from people who disagree with me, frankly, who will be like, I, I totally disagree with you on this subject or on this take or whatever, but I appreciate it. But here's my opinion. Those are my favorite people to hear from. Absolutely. When I hear from somebody who's like, man, I just can't do it anymore. It's too political. I'm like, I don't really know what to tell you. It's not, it's not political. Everything is technically political at this point, right? Politics have consumed everything. Yeah. If you want them up. to, yeah. like if you want everything to be politicized, you can live that life. I am going to choose to not do that, especially because I don't align with a political party, which is another hilarious aspect of this year. Um, just like the amount that we assume about each other cracks me up because I say one thing, the amount of things that are assumed about me based on one take that we're, we're, we're assuming too much (laughs) as a people. Absolutely. Just on both sides in general. And it's time to get back to like basic human connections and, and no longer like, you know, I can't wait for the simplicity of like waking up on a Monday to write this show and not having to worry about, like, how many people am I going to piss off this week with truth? <laughs> like, how many people are going to be upset and never come back to listen to the show again because of some shit that I have to address today? Like, I'm really looking forward to that not being the case week in and week out. But as a result of the way this year went, that's sort of how the cookie crumbled, man. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And frankly, I wouldn't have it any other way. No. For like, me, it's like I can't. Like, I have a vision of what I see. I've already seen a taste of it with the community that we've already started building and, and the fruits that have started to grow from that already and seeing the way that people love each other, like in our Discord server and on Twitch and stuff like that, the way people support each other. It's like I've seen, ex- yeah, for real, I've seen a vision of what this could be with growth and dedication and stuff like that. And so, Was for me, Nexium? huh? Nothing. <laughs> for me, I can't like stop fighting for that you know what i mean like if i feel that something is right and i feel that we have a potential to make a change in a certain area like i'm gonna keep fighting for that and not just accept things for the way that they are so even if people are gonna disagree or anything like that like we can't stop fighting the good fight and like fighting for what we see this could be in the future and going into the holiday season when you're gonna inevitably disagree with friends and family over stuff that that, that, none of us were ever meant to agree on everything i don't know how many times i've said it on this show but like i don't expect you to come here every week and agree with everything i say if anything that would be a weird like then that is a culty situation this isn't that this is is a place to share opinions and form opinions about things that matter and to try to learn and just get through this chaos we call life together with some semblance of like a team should be the goal right? you know that's that's the goal here so collectivism i get that this year has been the, it's the i it's the main reason i was stoked on biden becoming president 
is because the divisiveness sucks. It's miserable. I mean, it can't help for anyone. All of us. Yeah. Not for any. Nobody is winning that except. Well, I guess one dude was. I mean, nobody was. <laughs> nobody's life was improving. Divisiveness bad. Togetherness good. Individual bad. Team good. That's that's the goal. That's the way to live. That's that's how you find happiness. Which above all else is the only thing that matters at the end of the day. When you hit the casket, nobody's going to give a shit about anything else. How, how how many days did you spend happy in this life? That's going to be what matters. And that's the point of this podcast. And if sometimes I know it doesn't seem that way when we have to talk about difficult shit, but I promise you that's the end game here. It's the it's the it sometimes we're going to have to discuss very unpleasant things. Not all the time. If you go back through all the episodes we've done, there's probably 300 that are about general nonsense. And then there's 47 that are about hard shit. And that's a good split. Like, (laughs) probably 37 of those came in the past six months. So if we can get back to a normal clip of chaos in society so that this show can get back to a normal focus of mental health, wellness, happiness, and laughter, fucking two thumbs up for me, man. That's the direction I want to go in. So thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting Chris and I and allowing us the ability to speak with y'all week in and week out. Come through and join the RVP Discord server that you can find by coming and watching us on Twitch any of the weeks. You'll see that we have an incredible community of over a thousand people who are in there communicating on a day-to-day basis on... You know, mental health topics on on their they share pictures of their pets, talk about stonks, also sports. Uh, it's it's an incredible place. It's brought me a lot of joy um, and canceled out a lot of feelings of loneliness over the course of 2020. So we will be sure to continue to plug our Discord server during every stream that Chris and I do. So come through, watch us on Twitch, join the Discord server. It's like Discord is like Slack. But just for people who listen to this podcast, think of it that way, instead of your company or whatever. And if you don't know what Slack is, just Google Discord. Or like a massive group message with subcategories. Yeah, and like cooler shit that you can, well, there's cool shit you can do in group messages now too. As long as you don't have a green texture, and then then you're good. But if you are a green texture, Discord's a nice, you know, workaround there. Nobody knows if you're a green texture in there. It's anonymous. Anonymous green text. Huzzah! You can hide in secrecy for your entire life and shame of your green texting. But love y'all. Thanks for being here. And uh, yeah, looking forward to turning a new leaf, if you will. A new page. Shutting one book. Closing out a chapter. Setting that book on fire and then taking a shit on it. It's probably what we should do with that book at this point. Before you head out to take on the world, it's time for some very important announcements. First and foremost, you've been saddled with three legal obligations as a result of having listened to this entire podcast. The first of which is that you must rate and review. Rate and review. Five stars, two, three sentences about why you love the show. Do it on Apple Podcasts. Do it on Spotify. I don't even know if they have a rating system. Just do it. Just rate and review. Do it. Then move on to number two. Do it. Tell one friend, family member, a coworker, a neighbor, just one person, an individual this week that you think might enjoy the Ross Bolin podcast and what we're trying to do here, which I just explained. Share the show with them. And again... You can send them where... Maybe you share your favorite episode off Spotify because you know that person's a Spotify person. Maybe they're an Apple Podcast person and you send them the show, just the link to the show, whatever you need to do. YouTube.com slash Bolin Media. I don't know. Just share the show with one person. I come up with the legal obligation. You figure out how to fulfill it or I see you in court. Your third and final legal ob is to uh, support our sponsors who support us. Today we had three. Felix Gray, FelixGrayGlasses.com slash RBP. Best glasses ever. Get them. Quip. Best toothbrush and floss ever, getquip.com slash rbp, getquip.com slash rbp, and then echelon, echelonfit.com slash rbp, so that you can close out the year with a comeback as strong as possible. Those are your three legal obligations. Complete them all. I will call off the dogs. We won't have to see each other in court, and we can all live long and prosper. Follow us on Instagram at the Ross Boland Podcast, where every day we fill up our story with photos and videos sent in by our listenership, affectionately known as the RBP Gang. Christopher and I collect those uh, story pieces of uh, photos and videos from snapchat specifically so keep the snapchats coming to chris and i we'll keep taking the best ones and throwing them up on instagram every day we're on twitter at ross bolin pod at ross bolin pod on twitter and then facebook.com slash ross bolin podcast my name is ross bolin and you can follow me on twitter instagram and snapchat at w-r-b-o-l-e-n at w-r bolin on twitter instagram and snapchat again keep the snapchats coming so we can throw them on the instagram story and as i've said 
multiple times now throughout the course of this episode. We are live a few times a week on twitch.tv slash boss Roland, Chris, and I both go live. You can see our faces. We interact with people in the chat. We pull in podcast listeners to play with us, which we do through the Discord channel. So join the Discord channel again and uh, come through and watch us on Twitch whenever you see we're live. We usually do announcements on social media to let you know since the schedule is not so much a schedule as it is a fluid piece of art. Chris, where can everybody follow you on social media? I'd say modern art as well. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. very uh, you know, mm-hmm. take it as you will. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at chrissc99. You can follow me follow me on Twitter at q0uls, and you can follow me on Snapchat at chris underscore colson. That's c o u l s o n. Check out Bolin Media's television and film podcast, Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, available wherever you listen to the Ross Bolin podcast. If you love TV and movies, Hollywood and pop culture, then you'll love OCC. And we're making big changes to the show moving into 2021. It's been very hard to keep up with during 2020. You have to watch several hours of television a week, sometimes movies as well. Barrett and I have been spending an ungodly amount of time consuming television and movies and covering them on OCC this year. So the idea is to make uh, the show more accessible and enjoyable for everybody again, as it once was, because everybody was watching Game of Thrones, right? Well, not everybody is watching Dark for three seasons. Not everybody is watching... You know, there's a million different shows over a million different platforms, and this year, as a result of uh, the way things have gone, people are much more scattershot in what they're watching. So, OCC is making some adjustments to make 2021's uh, content even better. So, subscribe. Again, wherever you listen to RBP, you can find OCC, Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, formerly the number one Game of Thrones podcast in the world. That will do it for RBP 347, produced by Mike Moody Garcia of Permanent Record Studios in Austin, Texas. Chris and I will be back on Wednesday with RBP 348. But of course, first, this Friday, wait, no, second, Wednesdays before Friday. Friday, we'll be back again ad free on patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast with another exclusive ad free premium episode for dues paying members of the RBP gang pledging their monthly support to keep the podcast showing and growing go to patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast minimum of just five dollars monthly come through support the show get more RBP and that's all you have to hear today from me you are not alone Podmen get paid respect Mr. Park strength and honor gang 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 Christopher peace be with you And And also also with with you. you.